So here I want to talk about light for a moment and, and calculations involving light. So for calculating light, what I have here is I have a green laser. Okay, and that green part of that indicates something to me about how that light exists. All light is the same in the sense that radio waves and x-rays and, and visible light all, all are composed of the same substance in, the, in, a, in a changing electric and magnetic field sense. But the, but the frequency that they, that they change and the length of the wave, the results from that, are different. And, and what's interesting about that is that shows up in an energy sense, that different types of light have different energies. So calculations in chemistry are trying to get that idea across, and they start with the very simple set of two equations. Now, the first equation is C equals lambda nu. Lambda is this character here that looks like an upside down Y. The nu is, is the Greek letter as well. It looks like a V, a little curvature to it. Um, the speed of light is a constant, it cannot change no matter what. So the 3 times 10 to the 8, the 300 million meters per second that light travels is a constant and will always be used. What that implies then is if you know wavelength or frequency, either one, because you know the speed of light, you can then find the other. The units for speed of light given are meters per second. So when we're doing this analysis, we need to make sure that our wavelength is in meters and that our frequency is in hertz, which is also 1 over seconds or seconds to the minus 1, so that our units will match. The second equation we can use is E equals H nu. Energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. So the larger the frequency is, the more the energy is. The larger the frequency is, the shorter the wavelength will be. Okay, so going with this equation, energy's units are joules. The Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th. And the units of that are joules times seconds. And then the frequency, units of hertz, which is also seconds to the minus one, will then cancel these seconds here to give you the, the joules that you would have for the energy. Again, because there's a constant and only three things in this equation, if you know frequency, you know the energy, and if you know energy, you therefore know the frequency. If you combine the two equations, what that means is that if you know wavelength, frequency, or energy, that you know all three. So on this particular laser beam, it says on the laser beam that the wavelength of that light is 538 nanometers. So just by being given that, what I can then do is I can go through and figure out everything about it. So since I'm given wavelength, I would start with this equation. And I would need to start by taking nanometers and converting it. Now a nano is a billionth. So 538 nanometers is 538 units that are a billionth of a meter. So to get that into meters, I would take that 538 and multiply it by 10 to the minus 9th. What results from that is then 5.38 times 10 to the minus 7th. And for visible light, visible light will tend to be between 400 and 700 nanometers. You'll typically end up with 4 to 7 times 10 to the minus 7th in meters to be able to get that into meters. So from here, what I can do is plug this value into this equation, and I'm going to take C equals lambda nu, and I want to find that frequency nu, which is going to be equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So in this equation, whichever of the two you're given, if you divide that into the speed of light, you will get your frequency. For this, my frequency is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by this 5.38 times 10 to the minus 7. Now when you're calculating this, it's very important that you consider this all as one thing. If on your calculator you leave out parentheses on the ends of this, this 10 to the minus 7th will move up to the top. So if you're getting an answer that looks the same except for the power of 10, that's probably what's happening. So when I plug this into a calculator, it comes out to 5.64 times 10 to the 14th. Make sure I got that correct. And the units for that would be hertz. So that is the frequency of that light. Now I know how often I'm seeing a pulse of an electron acceleration repeating itself. And I look at this, now it's an extraordinary number, right? That's 564 uh, trillion hertz. So every one second that goes by, you're seeing 564 trillion pulses of that green light, which is beyond something that, that we would be able to kind of interpret, aside from our eyes. Then what I can do with this is I can plug this into this equation. Okay, now I know my frequency, that can go in here, along with the Planck's constant, and I can get my energy. This is very simple, I would just multiply the two quantities together. So the Planck's constant, 6.63, times 
times 10 to the minus 34th times this frequency, 5.64 times 10 to the 14th. Okay, now this, you're not going to see the same issues of parentheses because we're not dividing. Uh, and I end up with an answer of 3.74 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Make it a little more legible. Which is a very small amount until you consider the fact that that's just one, one of those photons. It's one of that light wave has that much energy. So if you were to add it up over time, if you have many of them like I do with this laser, that can add up to an appreciable amount of energy. One that could cause damage potentially. Um, so these are the two equations used for the calculations. Aside from a little bit of practice and getting the experience, usually once you've seen the 10 to the minus 7th, 10 to the minus 19th, 10 to the 14th, for visible light, they start to become a little repetitive. Um, if we throw in a radio wave or an x-ray or something with a very much different frequency, these numbers will change. For an x-ray, the energy will be higher, the frequency will be higher, and the wavelength will be smaller. For a radio wave, the opposite is true. For a radio wave, your energy will be smaller, your frequency will be smaller, um, but your wavelength will be much larger.